Logic Pro for iPad has been out for nearly two years now. And if like me, you haven't used it a heap lately, in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 tips that can refresh your knowledge and get you creating again. Let's go. Now, if you're short on time, pun intended, there's a shorts version of this video that I cover in just 60 seconds, and that one's linked in the description below. Tip one, Logic Pro is brilliant because it has this component structure where you've got a bunch of different windows that you can open all at once, but sometimes it gets a bit much. What if you just wanna go back to your main editing window? Well, all you need to do is go to your bottom section here and double tap, and look at that, like magic, everything is put away. You can bring it back up by double tapping again, or you can use individual components by turning them off and on using the buttons at the bottom. Tip two, global tracks. To access the global tracks, we tap on this button here at the moment. I've only got markers showing. To change that, I can tap and select which one I would like, or I can select multiple. If I tap on the three dots here and go into customize global tracks, I can actually say single track off and I can add up to five of the global tracks and view them right here on my main window. Tip three, if you've done dialed in that vocal or guitar sound exactly as you'd like it, you can save it as a preset. To do that, select your track and tap on this in the very far left, the little numbered icon. You're going to get this menu, tap on save patch, name it here. So you can just call this one Vox Pete lead and hit OK. And now that one will be available here in your audio patches for future use. Tip number four, one of the best things that we have here in Logic Pro for iPad, especially compared to GarageBand, is the stereo out track. But how can you display it here in your main window? Because if you go to the bottom, it's not there. Well, all you need to do is tap on the three dots and tap on show output track. And now check it out. Your stereo output track is at the bottom of your main window. And this, of course, correlates with the stereo out track in your mixer. Tip number five, if you need to change the input for a track, you may be aware that you can go to your mixer and at the very top here, you can change which input and on which audio device you are using. But a quicker and easier way if you're already in your main window is to just hit the channel strip button, which is down in the bottom left, and then tap on this icon at the top. And you can see you can adjust things like input monitoring, track freezing, solo save grouping, and most importantly, your input and output for that channel. So your channel fader button there is your friend. Tip number six, if you can't see your guitar tuner or some other transport control that you want on your toolbar, you can add them. To do that, we tap in the top right on the three dots there and go customize control bar. From here, we can add or remove transport items, display items, or even our modes, which include things like our counting, our metronome click, and our tuner. So if something is missing and it's not quite right and you want easy access to it, jump in here and customize your own control bar settings. Tip number seven is snap to grid. Your snap to grid settings are in the top right here. If you tap on that one, at the moment it's set to snap to grid and automatic. And that means depending how far in I'm zoomed, it'll snap to an eighth note, a quarter note, a half note, or even a whole bar. If you want to adjust that manually, you can do that as well. Or you can tap on snap to grid there and turn it off. And that means if you want to do some really fine tuning editing on your audio, you can actually drag it whatever distance you want without any snap to grid. Tip number eight, your count in. At the moment, by default, it'll count in one, two, three, four, and then start recording. Now, if you don't have access to this button at the top here, you'll need to add it by using the method we showed before. Tap in the top right, customize control bar modes, and turn on count in. And once it's actually there, a quick way to adjust how long the count in is, is to tap and hold on this button. And what you'll see there is you can have whatever you like here, right up to four bars of count in. So if you want a longer count in so you can pick up your guitar, grab your microphone, get ready to record, that's how you adjust it. Tip number nine is how to add your own audio to Logic Pro for iPad. Now this has actually changed since I last covered this in the previous tips video. What we can now do is use sample folders. To use those, we tap on the browser button in the bottom left and then tap on sample folders. And you can see I've already added some here, but to add a new one, all I need to do is tap on the three dots here, tap on add sample folder folder, select the folder I would like to add, either on my iPad or on my iCloud drive, hit the open button, and like magic, there is my folder. And then to add any of these sounds into my project, it's just a matter of tapping, dragging, and dropping into my project. The other method is still possible, and this can be good if you're importing multiple files at once. To use this, we tap on the three dots at the top and go into split view. Now select the files app, 
and you can tap, drag, and drop any file directly over into Logic Pro. Or by tapping in the top right and tapping on Select, you can select multiple files and bring them all across to Logic Pro at once. And for more on this, check out the other videos in the description. And finally, tip number 10 is exporting your project. To do this, we just tap directly up the top here on the name of the project and tap on export. And from here, you can export compressed, uncompressed. You can even export as individual files if you want the stems to send to someone else. And when you're ready to go, just hit the export button and it will save out that file or multiple files. And what would a top 10 list be without a final bonus tip number 11? And this is about navigating around your project project. You can zoom in and zoom out, but be cautious because you'll notice if we zoom too far in, we lose some of the options here. The volume fader goes away. So if you zoom back out, it gives room and more of these options are available. So if you're missing any of your options, that could be why. Just zoom out on your view, make those bars a bit chonkier and things should all pop back into place. Oh, and if your view looks like this, just grab this handle and slide to the right and you'll have full access to all of your options. What additional Logic Pro for I iPad tips do you have? Drop those down in the comments below. And who knows, maybe a part two on this is just around the corner. Thanks for watching. More videos down in the description and I'll see you next time.